This video is dedicated to ophthalmology residents all over the world. This is a totally unedited recording. In this video, we are going to learn SICS, small incision cataract surgery. Nice dripping is very much important. The lead margin should be nicely covered. No eyelash should project into the operating field. The ocular surface is thoroughly irrigated, instilling few drops of 5% povidone iodine. And now, it is important for beginners to hold the, to bridle the superior rectus tendon. The eyeball is turned down using a muscle hook. The superiorectus holding forceps is used and then a thick nylon suture is passed under the superiorectus tendon. This is a very much essential step. This step will give a very stable eye for making tunnel and for the initial steps of the surgery and it will help in nucleus delivery. Now conjunctival peritomy. Conjunctival peritomy is done for two clock hours. This is a small radial cut. The tenons is incised. The scleral surface must be exposed. If the sclera is covered with tenons, if you just cut the conjunctiva, this will not help. The scleral surface is nicely exposed. So, this is conjunctival peritomy for about 2 clock hours from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. This is a SICS with superior approach. We can do temporal SICS also. Very mild cautery is done. Very mild weight field cautery is done. The conjunctiva is protected with the part. The conjunctiva must not be touched by the cautery prongs. And now the making the sclerocorneal tunnel. This is going to be a mild frown incision along this path. This is almost half thickness incision. You can use a guarded knife for this. Check the depth of the groove all around. Almost half thickness of the sclera has been incised now. This crescent blade goes forward into clear cornea. It is being swept backward and to the left to get left side of the sclerocorneal tunnel. The contour of the eyeball must be remembered. Now we go like this at the sides so that the inner opening of the tunnel is larger than the outer opening. The outer opening is about 7 millimeter. The inner opening is about 8.5 or 9 millimeter. This is a soft cataract, so we do not need a larger incision. And now, a side boot. A side put is being made at 8.45 o'clock.
and we are having very good red glow in this case the microscope is Lumera T from Jais, Germany. The antechamber is filled up with visco and this is the stereo coaxial illumination. If we have this kind of red glow, we do not need any dye. 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock a straight cut, the 12 o'clock end is pulled, we get a flap, the flap is flipped and this flap is being pushed in this way, guided in this way up to 3 o'clock and from 3 o'clock we pull the flap up to 9 o'clock and complete the rexus. This is a 26 gauze band needle. And now we are going to open the tunnel. A keratome is taken, visco again. A keratome is taken, this is a 2.8 millimeter keratome. Go to the anterior extreme of the wound. This is the anterior extreme and now go down or downward, enter into the anterior chamber and now cut the tissue only during forward movement so that we get very nice corneal valve so that the wound becomes self-sealed. And now this is hydrodissection, rexis is large so we get on part of the equator comes out of the bag and with the hydro dissection cannula itself we could prolapse the nucleus in this case. Visco anteriorly and posteriorly, anterior to the lens mass and posterior to the lens mass is because anterior to the lens mass to protect the corneal endothelium, uh, posterior to make some space so that we can introduce this irrigating vectus. This irrigating vectus is attached to a bottle, not to a syringe and very gently we can deliver the nucleus in this way. And now cortical cleanup is to be done. Before using the, before starting aspiration, gentle stream of BSS or ringer lactate is directed towards the cornea so that whatever cortex sticks to the back of the cornea gets displaced and we get clearer view. Now through the main wound the sub incisional cortex is sub side port cortex is removed and now go through the side port and remove the rest of the cortex. And this time only stereo coaxial illumination gives probably a better view, I will try next time. And now is the time to implant the intraocular lens. The lens we are going to place in this case is a PMMA lens from Upper Sami Associates. It is, its brand name is Liberty Lens. I have no financial interest but I am very grateful to this ophthalmic company. Here goes the PMMA lens, the leading haptic goes into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is placed in the bag in this way. And now is the time to remove the visco. 
using a simco cannula a 23 gauze simco to remove the visco first i irrigate for some time irrigate the anterior chamber then i go behind the lens and irrigate the capsular bag again irrigate the anterior chamber and come out now irrigation and aspiration is being done through the side port very nice cleaning of visco helps a lot tas is less patient has normal intraocular pressure next day patient remains very happy i am using the irrigating probe of by manual irrigation aspiration for some more irrigation this will remove all the visco from the capsular bag at the same time i'm polishing the posterior capsule with the irrigating probe and now this is moxi floxacin corneal stroma on either side of the side port is hydrated and the side port becomes sealed and this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber the anterior chamber is formed very nicely the wound is checked with a cotton tipped junction bard no leakage intraocular pressure is okay and now the conjunctiva has to be opposed to the limbus in this case i am not using any suture just injecting subconjunctival gentamicin and dexamethasone creating some chemosis and this will push the conjunctiva to the limbus cut the superior rectus brittle suture and remove the speculum hope this video will help you in learning sics thank you very much for your attention be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love respect empathy and great surgical competence